The need for acceptance is a basic human need that we all share. Who does not want to feel like he fits in and that they belong? And in order to achieve that, we tweak our personalities and present ourselves in different ways according to the environment we're in and according to the people that we are set with. From the fear of alienation, from the fear of estrangement, from the fear of being given the title of gharib, you're a stranger, you're weird. And therefore we have different editions, different versions that we give off of our personalities because no one wants to be the black sheep that doesn't match the herd. And this feeling of ghurba, being a gharib, a stranger, is something that everybody has experienced and it is to some extent traumatic and stressful. You felt it when you moved out of your home for the first time or when you had a sudden job change or some of us who may have experienced divorce or a death in the family. That feeling of ghurba, being strange, is real. But we can agree that the most stressful and traumatic versions of being alienated is when this alienation is to do with principles, values, religion. And that is why Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abu Huraira that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bada al-Islam gharibah. Islam began as something strange. وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَعْ And it shall return as being something strange. فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَى So good news to the strangers. And the bite of being a stranger is of two categories. The first category is the stranger of a Muslim in the middle of people who are not. This is a form of ghurba. One that Allah has asserted in the Quran time and time again that you, O oh Muslims, will be usually a minority amidst a non-Muslim majority. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, لَقَدْ جِئْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ We've come to you with the truth. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَكُمْ لِلْحَقِّ كَارِهُونَ But most of you despise the truth. Most. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَقَلِيلُ مَا هُمْ Except those who believe and they do good deeds and they are few in number. Allah said, فَأَبَى أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ إِلَّا كُفُورًا Most of humanity accept nothing but disbelief. Most. Allah said, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Few of my servants are those who are grateful. Every time the Qur'an speaks of a majority, it dispraises it. Every time the Qur'an speaks of a minority, it praises it. And Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the same meaning, where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَا أَنْتُمْ فِي أَهْلِ الشِّرْكِ إِلَّا كَالشَّعْرَةِ الْبَيْضَاءِ فِي جِلْدِ الثَّوْرِ الْأَسْوَدِ You, O oh Muslims, in terms of your numbers, amidst the non-Muslims are like a white hair on the body of a black bull. This is category number one from ghurbah, being a stranger. A stranger amidst people who don't share your religion. And it is stressful. And perhaps the most recent example we can cite is the example of Idrissa Gay a Senegalese football player who decided to not participate in a football match because on that day they all were wearing the t-shirt with the LGBT rainbow colors. So for one reason or another he was absent. And so he was hunted down by the press and the French Association of Football. 
And they said to him in an arrogant manner that one of two situations apply. Either these rumors that you're not supporting the LGBT are true, in which case you are to know that there are going to be consequences for your action and to realize the impact of your behavior and to realize the grave mistake you have committed, they say to him. Or either these allegations are false, in which case we invite you to send a message of support and you are wearing the t-shirt, send us a picture. How do you describe his situation now amidst this avalanche of condemnation? Gharib, a stranger, is a good word to describe him and many other Muslims who simply want to be as Allah intended. This is category number one, the strangeness of the Muslim amidst the non-Muslims. Category number two, it is the ghurba, the alienation of the committed Muslim amidst the non-committed Muslims. They are also strangers and they feel the bite of alienation. And what hurts about this category is that the ones who cause this pain are the Muslims themselves on one another. Examples. Many times when an imam or a scholar or a student of knowledge or an activist speaks about the prohibition of buying and selling drugs or alcohol or using interest, or serving shisha in your store, or something to that effect, in many instances, those who protest and object are the Muslims themselves. Many times when you speak about the ideal hijab, intended by Allah for our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, those who are first to object in some instances are the Muslims themselves. When you speak about the role of motherhood and being a homemaker as being a great profession and raise it above all in many instances, those who object are the Muslims themselves. So this brings about a type of ghurbah in the heart of the Muslim. When he sees his family, he sees his brethren speaking against him whilst all he or she are trying to do is be a Muslim upon the prophetic path. And so a word of advice to the Muslims, especially where you are living as a minority, have mercy on one another. Be gentle with one another. And don't add to the flames of ghurba, strangeness that we are already feeling. And that was the advice of our predecessors, Al-Hasan al-Basri. He said, Ya ahla sunnati tarafaku rahimakumullah, fa innakum min aqallin nafs. He said, O oh, people of the sunnah, have mercy on one another, may Allah have mercy upon you because you are a minority amongst the people. Have mercy on each other. And Sufyan al-Thawri, he said, Take care of the people of the Sunnah because they are strangers. They feel strange. They feel strange when they look around and they see their fellow Muslim brothers and sisters with their greatest aspirations in life to receive the reassuring nod of acknowledgement from society, from parliament, from friends, from social constructs. They feel strange because all they want is the acknowledgement of the king, Allah, the sovereign, and the prophetic nod of acknowledgement on the day of judgment. They feel strange when they see their Muslim brothers and sisters jumping through every hoop and wearing every mask to fit in to not be labeled as a stranger. But for them, they hold on to their principles and values, even if it rocks a few boats along the way. And that is because society is always drumming into their heads and saying to them, you can't fit where you don't belong. So they've given up trying to fit in at the expense of their principles, and they have chosen to not compromise. They have chosen to inhabit planet Earth on their own terms, on their own conditions, as practicing Muslims who will not compromise. They are travelers to Allah along a prophetic path and with that decision they are aware that they will be labeled as strangers along the way. And now I share with you a question. 
being a gharib, a stranger, does this necessarily equate to helplessness and weakness and living on the fringes of society? Let us take a look. Bada al Islam gariba. Islam began as something strange. Islam began with a woman who supported her husband, Khadija bint Khuwailid, radiyallahu anha. Islam began with a Siddiq, a man of truth, Abu Bakr, radiyallahu anhu. And Islam began with a child, Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiyallahu anhu. The entire Meccan society had labeled our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a madman, a magician, a soothsayer, a poet. They, however, put their hands in his, acknowledged his prophethood, and vowed to live and die upon his cause. They were strangers in their community. And they had values and principles that were incompatible with the Meccan society. And Allah documents this strangeness in the Quran when He said, "Bal ajibu, an jaahum mundirun minhum, faqal al kafirun hada shayun ajib." They were amazed, the pagans, <coughs> that a warner should be sent from amongst them, and the disbelievers. They said, "This is something strange." And Allah said in Surah Sad, "Ajaal al alihat ilahan wahida." Has he reduced all of our gods into just one god? This is something totally strange. They were strangers. And they were persecuted. He وسلم, was sent amidst a stubborn society of paganism that would wage war on a neighboring tribe if they dared to cross limits of one camel. So I ask you, what do you think they will do to a man who speaks out against their idols for the sake of which they slaughter thousands of camels? He sallallahu alayhi wasallam answers that question. He said, لَقَدْ أُخِفْتُ فِي اللَّهِ وَمَا يَخَافُ أَحَدٍ I was subjected to fear at a time when nobody else was afraid. وَلَقَدْ أُذِيتُ فِي اللَّهِ وَمَا يُؤْذَى أَحَدٍ And I was harmed in the path of Allah at a time when nobody else was being harmed. وَلَقَدْ أَتَتْ عَلَيَّ ثَلَاثُونَ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ And I remember a time when 30 days and nights passed by. وَمَا لِي وَلِبِلَالٍ طَعَامٌ يَأْكُنُهُ ذُو كَبِدٍ إِلَّا شَيْءٌ يُوَارِيهِ إِبِطُ بِلَالٍ 30 days went by with no food to eat for me and Bilal except what little food he was able to smuggle for us under his arm. Allahu Akbar. Suffocated in the path of Allah, dust thrown in his head in the path of Allah, the intestines of animals placed on his neck in sujood in the path of Allah, boycotted for over two years in the path of Allah, ghurba, alienation at its worst. This lasted for around 13 years in Mecca. Then they went to Medina, as you know, and here this began to mark the rise of Islam till Allah established his religion on the earth and the light of Islam would shine all to all four corners of the earth, and the justice of Islam would be celebrated globally, and finally Allah had released the Muslims from these shackles of ghurbah, being strange. They were no longer strangers. With what you have just heard, we have just addressed a very common misunderstanding when it comes to the topic of ghurbah, being strange as a Muslim, and accepting that. Being strange does not mean helplessness. From his example, who was a gharib, alayhi salatu wasalam, a stranger, but was a man of meticulous planning and hard work and staying up at night and mingling with society and community service, we understand from his model that being a stranger does not mean uselessness, does not mean being weak. When you say gharib, a stranger, you think of a man who is living somewhere on the fringes of a, of a community, silent, imperceptible, invisible, minding his own business, jobless, useless, weak and meek. This is the image. Disheveled, uh, untidy, with no money, no status, no contribution. Nah, this is not the understanding of being gharib from what you have just heard. 
The gharib, the stranger, is a doctor, is an engineer, is a lawyer, is a businessman, is a taxi driver, is a painter, is a laborer, is a teacher, is a mother, is a homemaker, is an artist, is an influencer, is, is a sportsman. These are ghuraba. They are innovators in their society, participants in the mujtama, the community. They give, they serve. The ghuraba, they're amicable. They're lovable, they're admirable, they have friends and families, they have dreams and aspirations and ambitions. The only thing that makes the gharib, the stranger, different to others is the state of his heart, her heart. They feel that they are not totally in par with the dictates of society. Their hearts burn with pain when they see Muslims abandoning the masjid. They are upset when they see their brethren losing their Islamic identity. And so when they are alone with Allah at night, they weep to him and they beg for his help and to awaken their brothers and sisters. But by day, when the sun rises, they are back into the community and their voices will not be silent. And they are servicemen and service women in the cause of the religion and in aid of people. These are the ghuraba. It is not a title of weakness and shame and uselessness and joblessness. Abadan. After all, Amir al-Mu'minin Abu Bakr was a gharib. He was a stranger. But how did he understand being a stranger? He was a merchant. He was affluent, prosperous, comfortable financially. He was part of his society. He wasn't pushed out to the peripheries. Abu Bakr giving loans to the needy, spending on the poor, purchasing slaves, emancipating them back as free men into the community, loved by the people for the most part. This is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and he was a gharib stranger. Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn al-Khattab was a gharib, he was a stranger. Principles and values different to others. But he was eloquent in his speech, decisive in his opinions, imposing in his presence. Who dare confront Umar radiallahu anhu when he thought something wrong was wrong? or something right was right. Gharib, but part of society contributing and reaching the top in his game. So this is the understanding of being a gharib, dear brothers and sisters. Who are the ghuraba? I conclude with some descriptions given by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see if you fit the description or not. Because feeling alienated and estranged is not enough as an indicator. There are signs. Hadith number one. Abu Amr al-Dani narrates in his book Al-Fitan al-Waridah or Al-Athar al-Waridah fi al-Fitan on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked Man hum ya Rasulullah, ya ahli al-Ghuraba? Who are the strangers? He said, Al-Lathina yasluhuna idha fasal al-Nas. They are the ones who stay righteous when people become corrupt. These are the strangers. Hadith number two. At Tirmidhi narrates on the authority of Amr ibn Awf that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was asked, Who are the strangers? He said, Alladheena yuslihuna ma afsad al nasu min ba'di min sunnati. The strangers are those who rectify the sunnah that people have corrupted after my death. Hadith number three. Who are the strangers, O Messenger of Allah? This hadith is in the Musnad of Ahmad. And he said, Unasun Salihun, they are righteous people. Fi Unasi su in Kathir, amidst many evil people, may Yasihim, Akharumiman Yutayahum. And those who reject them are more than those who accept them. So they are righteous people. Number two, they call to righteousness. Number three, they are rejected by most people. These are the strangers and so good news to them. Good news to our sister who walks the earth with her hijab in dignity, who breathes life into values that are dying today like chastity, and purity, and haya, and modesty. Good news to her. Good news to our sister who has not buckled under pressure and acquiesced and is content with the religion of Allah. Good news to her. And congratulations for being a stranger, though in the eyes of Allah, she is no stranger. 
and congratulations to our Muslim brother who does not compromise on his salah, who has not disintegrated as a weak identity Muslim, who lowers his gaze and protects his private parts from haram and only eats from halal sources of income and befriends the finest of people. Congratulations for being a stranger. Though in the eyes of Allah, you are no stranger. And congratulations to those who have only one version of themselves to present to the world. A practicing Muslim of an unapologetic identity. Never sandpapering parts of your religion to be part of a herd. Congratulations. As Imam ibn al-Qayyim said, these are the family members of Allah. فَلَا غُرْبَةَ لَهُمْ So they are no strangers.